This video is on your ability to create pretty cool looking logos using PowerPoint. That's right, PowerPoint. Now, in the 2007 version of PowerPoint, we received new WordArt. Yay! When you go to WordArt now, this is the menu you get. So you have the choice of all these types of WordArt to insert. And they give you a set color just to differentiate one from the other, but you're not stuck with that color. So look at the style and see which one you like and then you can pick one of the styles and then you can change a whole bunch of things afterwards now if you don't like the style you chose of course you can go back to styles and choose a different style you've also got the ability to change the color of the fill so if you don't like the color that you got you can go to different colors very easily You still have the same type of style, this shiny look here. You can also change the outline color. So right away we've got a lot of choices. And if you if you hover over the colors, your background is adjusting. Now keep this in mind. Depending on the menu you call up, this may or may not be blocked. So if it does get blocked when you're trying to check out the menus, just move it. I find the bottom left to be safe most of the time. However, when we start using some of these tools, that might be in the way as well. So I'm not having to click on the colors here. I'm just hovering over the colors. And the preview is adjusting automatically, which is great when you're, when you're picking not only the outline, but I believe it'll work for the fill as well. And it doesn't. However, is there a quick fill? No, there is no quick fill. All right, so the outline it works. It also works for these, which I think is really important because a lot of times you don't know what these do or how it's going to affect the one that you chose. So I love the fact that I can just hover over this and see what kind of effect that's going to have and what I've chosen as far as text is concerned. So right away, I'm getting a lot of real neat effects that were never available in anything Microsoft before. And I'm just in shadow here. Then you can go into reflection, which I'm a huge fan of. Love the reflection. Okay, so again, I'm just hovering. And I'm able to preview what this is going to look like. You've got glows, different colored glows. And again, I'm just hovering here and it's giving me the preview. I got more colors to glow. I've got bevels. Now this style already had a bevel in it, which is why it looks the way it does. But if you don't like the way it does, it looks, you can change the type of bevel that you get. You've got rotating features. Now here's an example of this menu is now kind of in my way. So if you know it's going to be in your way, just move this for now. And I was, I was here, and I was in rotation, I believe. And I realized it's still blocking me a little bit, but I'm still getting a bit of a preview in the background as to what this does. And then I'm, they got transform, so you take your shape and change it. So right away, those are an awful lot of things that you can do to your word art to make it look a little bit better. I didn't really choose any. I probably should have. I'll just choose that one to keep it simple. So that's in word styles. Now, we're not done. We now have the ability to change the shape that your word art happens to be in. So from there, we have all of these that we can choose from. And again, if you just hover your mouse over this, it'll give you a preview as to what that's going to look like. Now, understand these little styles that are in here have bevels and outlines built into them. However, if the, if the selection here isn't enough, you can customize your own if you'd like. So you can ch click one or not click one and then go into fill. And then I'm just hovering again and I'm getting colors gradients I mean you can spend an awful lot of time just just 
And again, I'm, it's blocking me here. So if I want to see what this is going to look like, I would probably take cougars now and I'd move it here. And then maybe I can come in here and see what is this going to do. So you've got those choices. That's just fill. Then you can change your outlines, the size, the weight, the color of your outline. You can also change the effects. Same type of effects that we had for the text before, but now it's for the buttons. And because I haven't actually chosen a style, it's, it's changing just the background of this thing. And the one that I just had was pretty cool. So as you can tell, the, the amount of effects that are at your disposal here are pretty mind-blowing. And I'm just in shadow here. So now we've already got some reflection happening, but now we have even more options here. And then you've got glow. Now, some of these are not showing anything in the background. Uh, glow, soft edges, bevel, they're not going to work because we don't actually have a frame. We would have to have a frame around them, and then the frame would be glowing. Okay? And then the soft edges would also work, and the bevels would also work. But for now, I don't think it's going to display anything because it doesn't affect. Uh, the 3D rotation, I believe, will... Yeah, it will show you what these rotations are going to look like. So, between the menus here and the menus here, you can literally spend hours just trying to determine which one of them you're going to want to apply to your logo. And that would be the first part of your logo. The next part of your logo could in incorporate some clip art or some pictures. Now, I brought in a logo here. And then we've got this here. And if you want one on both sides, you would, of course, take a copy of this and just add it. And then I would recommend that you select all three. And then you use some of the tools that we've already learned how to use in a range. And then we'll want to make sure that they're aligned top or middle or bottom, ju just so that they're all the same height. So those are all aligned now. And then I'd also want to distribute these evenly. So that's align, distribute. So the amount of space between the three is the exact same. And then I'm going to want to group these. Now, I don't really want to group them now, but I'm going to group them now just for the sake of this lesson. And now I could take that and I could save that as a picture, as a JPEG or as a PNG. And then, of course, you know that once you've done that, you can insert it anywhere. I can also simply just copy and paste this. Um, so if I save this as a picture, which I can do right now, I'll just replace that picture right there and say save. Now that it's saved as a picture, I can drop that into anything, including a website. Now I've got a website with a background, with a gray background here on purpose. So I'm going to insert that picture. And there we go. Beautiful. This time around, it came with no white background. It may happen that you'll create a JPEG or a PNG and it will come with a background. If that happens, you would have to ungroup, first of all. So we're going to ungroup this. And then if, this, if the white in this picture shows through, it can be removed. Now, I've reinserted the original JPEG, and the original JPEG of this cougar has white background all around it. And this is what, what you need to do. With this picture selected, you would go to Recolor here, and then ask for Set Transparent Color, which means whatever color I click on will automatically become transparent for that whole picture. So I'm going to click this button, and then I'm going to click on the white. Now, everything that's white on this image is going to become transparent. And as you can see, the cougars in the back is showing through this picture. So the reason my original worked is that I had already done that to these cougars. And as a result, they came out transparent in here. And I wanted them to because, trust me, the big white block back here looked terrible. Now, if for some reason 
this also this part comes with a white background you can set that to transparent as well so I go to shape fill and for some reason no fill didn't cut it so I had to go further I had to go into I believe more color fills and I made it 100% transparent and then I hit OK sometimes you have to do this sometimes you don't it seems rather um, random um, as to when it decides to work transparent uh, the transparent come through or not so if it does not come out transparent and you can't see through to the background then change it a couple of other things you may have a situation where you want to repeat the picture let's say I have these dumbbells here and I want them on the other side so it's just a matter of control drag and drop or copy and paste whatever you wish right you can very easily switch this so that it looks like a different picture altogether the little trick I like and and it's right here and I just flip them this way it's the exact same picture but it's flipped looking the other way and that gives it a bit of a neat a neat look and again I had to reset this picture so that it didn't have any background any white in the background so Spend some time in PowerPoint, uh, experiment with the word art, group things, um, save them as a JPEG or a PNG, and practice inserting them. And anytime you'll need a logo or some kind of caption, you'll be set.